the students uh, in the next few days after this. If you do have any questions as things go along, you can put them on the chat uh, and then uh, Stuart will respond to those uh, when he's able to, either during or at the end of the presentation. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I have no further to do. I will now pass you over to Stuart, who will talk you through games and visual effects, uh, as well as a whole number of other things. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, firstly, kind of hi everyone, and welcome to what will hopefully be an informative kind of half an hour of me talking about what we do in the Games and Visual Effects Department at Staffs Uni. So, um, I'm well aware these sessions are, are very odd, being digital. Um, we've been teaching like this for a year or so. So, as Paul said, if you, something does jump to your mind, um, do feel free to lob it in the chat. I've got the screen, and I will try and kind of pick up things. Um, Sometimes it's nice even just to have a little response, so I know that my internet's still working. I'm not just talking to myself, which is a you know an occurrence normally anyway, but still. So yeah, so who I am? Stuart Butler. I'm a course director for games technology at Staff Uni, and um, what that means is that I look after one of five areas of the games and visual effects department. So I look after uh, games programming development, which is pretty much programming or orientated, but looking a bit more closely at using game engines and also our applied technology side, which is augmented and virtual realities. So my personal background is a little bit different from what I guess. So I'm, I'm a games artist and a games designer by kind of uh, trade. Um, I actually am a graduate of King Edwards as well. So I, um, I was a student in exactly where you are now quite a while ago but um but yeah so i have i have that so i can sort of yeah I, I can relate i guess but um i'm also an authorized unreal engine instructor which is something i don't put on my slides but um, it means that epic games have given me a stamp of approval to teach um the unreal engine and teach students on pretty awesome so ultimately what we do is we take people who have a interesting games which gets labeled as a gamer these days um, and we move them towards being games developers and people who make games predominantly games we do have the visual effects department which i'll um, talk a little bit about later on but ultimately yeah why wouldn't you want to work in the games industry when we're looking at things like a global market two years ago um we're looking uh, an estimate of 196 by the end of next year, which is which is stunning. It is one industry that has not seen any negative impact of uh, financially, at least, of things like uh, changes uh, across stock markets, uh, the COVID situation, and everything else. It really is an industry which is flourishing and um, and growing, and studios are popping up everywhere, and and they're growing as well, which is which is great. The mobile games account for about 40 mobile games are games for your phone. So um, anything from um, your sort of your very passive play Facebook games to more serious stuff, um, I guess, like um, like Fortnite on the phone. Some interesting stats. So this is actually a little bit out of date. That number is now bigger, um, and I believe um, may have even swung the other way um, but it's tricky to get fully up to date things and then esports is another side which um which we saw, which is now growing as well and becoming a huge global market so games video content so that's people making games content on youtube uh twitch playing games the sorts of things that you folks might engage with is worth 4.6 economy so we're not talking small numbers we're talking sort of big money. So for UK in 2019, the UK games industry was worth £5.7 billion pounds, um, with nearly 2,000 active companies um, which were registered in February 2020. So, um, these, these numbers kind of update at regular points with the various companies that track them. So that's kind of the, the last one that we had access to. Um, and by now, you've probably heard of Grand Theft Auto V by Rockstar. Um, it is the financially most successful um, shipping huge numbers 
developers and continuing to um, just continue making billions of dollars, really. Um, the interesting thing with GTA as well, that it's now been released GTA 5 on the of console, which is kind of cool. But also for us and for me personally, um, I taught half of their vehicle art team to make cars. So um, I take a little bit of claim in their success, although not financial, which is you know, slightly disappointing. The Midlands, so where we are, uh, growth and employment over the sort of the period that was recorded with um, an, a nearly 50% growth in, in sort of jobs in games. And then we've got UK esports that is growing as well. So we're looking at a huge number of jobs that are available to folks. And at the point you're at in your lives, you may not be yet considering employment, but it's something that will no doubt be on the sort of perhaps your parents' questions when it comes to what you want to do for a degree. So here's some more fun statistics. So out to personal games development, we've got service companies supporting games industries. That could be anything from hardware to um, similar software options. Things like VR's growth, which um, is actually growing faster outside of games than it is within games, but heavily driven by the games technology that's behind it. It's an area that um, my team currently develop. Um, Esports is one of the fastest growing sectors in the world, and the UK market for games is massive as well. So, what if games are puzzles? Games have rules, games have laws which we must follow, and ultimately, those things make them fun and allow people to have fun. The other side of it is why we play. So, you really want to go into this in a deep exploration. Um, originally, the oldest sort of recorded evidence of games was actually used to keep a dying population who didn't have enough food occupied during one day a week, so they didn't eat um, to keep it. Um, but more recently, we're looking at entertainment, not survival. So um, you know, for me, and feel free to put kind of things in the um, in the chat for what makes you want to game. But ultimately for me, I so I enjoy doing something that isn't, I guess right now sitting here, um, but I love to explore kind of other things and also do, um, I like a lot of racing games and sort of fast paced adrenaline things, things that I basically can't afford to do in the real world. So um, you kind of maybe lob into the chat if you, if you are a game and I assume because you've come along to this talk, you probably do have an interest in games. Um, what perhaps um, you might play games for. But ultimately, what everybody's looking for is that kind of positive, rewarding experience. Now, I kind of mentioned a little bit of this, um, all about meaningful choices and fulfilling things. And I've got a lot of slides in this particular presentation because it's, it's designed for perhaps a slightly longer talk. Um, but ultimately, what we're looking for when we when we make games is to give players those sort of and uh, what they might do. So from a games design perspective, we always look at these six elements of challenge, whether that be mental or physical, decision making, meeting the challenges, goals, rewards, rules, and then interactivity. And as a as a, ultimately you go through this pattern to arrive at the interactive experience that players are going to have um, fun with. And this is a, a direct quote from uh, from literature, which is great. So we do still have an academic side. Um, but these are kind of the things that we put into games. There's a lot more than just, I've got an idea. So everything that's kind of here is what we think about as games developers and games designers. Um, and some of these are hugely generic. So graphics is a massively generic title for um, a huge area of kind of learning and study and development. But all these things feed into a game. So how do we make it? Well, ultimately, if you were to pursue a career in game, various tiers of a system. Now, this is a slightly misleading diagram because it's kind of tricky to, 
to, to display it easily. But um, the CEO sits at the top and produces. Programmers aren't the bosses of designers, but ultimately we've kind of tried to lay it down in a, a kind of a stack. So programmers build the very basics that we work on um, as, as designers or artists. They build the engines, the tools, and all the things that are going to make um, make things happen. And ultimately, without a programmer, you can't have a game. The games designer looks at what it is the player is going to do development and, and how the players are going to interact, what their motivations are. And depending on what part of design, it might be interaction, it might be uh, sort of uh, combat design and all those sorts of things. Level designers look at the world that players interact with and where they go, where they travel, take a player from one place to another. Uh, um, surprisingly more important than, than perhaps folks realise, um, particularly with more modern games. The, the trick always used to be, say, five, ten years ago with the game that we would the easiest way to get a player from A to B is to put a light at B, and they will inevitably like giant kind of um, moths to a bug zapper. But now with more open world experiences, we need slightly different tricks than just putting a light. Um, then you have the artists. So the artists pretty much build everything that you see, something that you visually see on the screen was made by an artist. And then testers, really important role in the games industry um, because ultimately they play the game a lot and find all the problems and then send those back to everybody else listed there. A lovely diagram here that, um, that in some way kind of goes to explain games. I always, I always chuckle a little bit whenever I see anybody try and present a neat and tidy diagram for anything kind of games development related because Whilst and it very rarely is this clean cut, but ultimately this is where what the sort of path that we would follow in games development. So you've got your conception and your idea, and then you kind of make sure that that's going to work and it's fun to play. Very kind of early prototypes of games. You can embrace some of this. Go and have a, a look on YouTube for um, Overwatch. Um, very early builds of Overwatch. There's some great um, designer discussions of the very first builds, and there's some hilarious kind of videos of um, of the characters being something you can play with, just to prove that the game is fun. You then got your kind of split of narrative versus functionality, and then that comes back into how does the player progress through that world, and then the rest of the team get involved, and ultimately you end up with which is probably the most exciting part of, um, of being a games dev is seeing products on the shelf. Um, still my favorite moment of, uh, of, doing, of doing my jobs over the years. So um, this would normally be a little bit more interactive, I guess, because I would ask you what you do know about us, but I can already see from my encouragement of you folks um, popping stuff in the chat that that's a feature that perhaps you're not so keen on using. Um, but ultimately, we are um, one of the largest games education providers in the UK. We are um, we're located up in Stoke-on-Trent, commuting. Um, and I believe you can get a direct train from um, Stabridge Junction actually to to staff. So I'm not entirely sure on that because I haven't used a train in probably about four or five years, um, and I've never done that journey personally. So. Don't quote me on that one. Um, but all of course is in our department that will line you up to do roles in almost any part of games development. So a lot of our courses will cover multiple areas, but if there's anywhere you want to go, we can probably help you get there, which is um, something we're really proud of being able to do. And that's whether you're looking to go into AAA or even set up your own. So this is what we have across our um, current provision so um, we are currently going through some uh, course restructures which is which we do regularly to make sure that everything that we do is um, up to date and kind of um, correct so um, but I think most of these titles will continue to exist except perhaps the VR course in the middle um, which may look very different when you come to apply so just bear that one in mind but we have courses through games design which cover all of the um, 
Well, our, our main computer games design course is, is a choose your own adventure. So we show you a little bit of everything to do with games development and games design. And um, so everything from 3D, Unreal Engine, um, design theory, you can do animation and motion capture, et cetera, in your first year. And then you go and specialize a little bit more and refine the education that you get access to, to suit whatever it is you want to do. And then we have the courses that are across this current slide. They give you a lot more um, options and a lot more kind of, if you sit particularly down this left hand side here, I just remembered I've got a mouse. Um, I realise that's a bit of a daft statement, but normally in these presentations I'm wandering around. Um, this, the, the programming courses here are much more code orientated, so um, they currently sit under me um, or at um, C++, uh, object orientated programming um in the computer games programming so we're doing physics networking ai um those sorts of areas and then in computer games development it we get step up a little bit avoiding level game code but instead working with c plus plus and engines so primarily ue4 will be the kind of the target by the time you get to us i think um I've just realized that this is out of date. This is no longer taught by the business school. Um, games, business, and esports now sit underneath um, us as well. Outside, depending on kind of what you folks are interested in, um, we have a run through of kind of three areas of digital art. So we've got our, our games art area, which is purely looking at making uh, characters, environments, vehicles, but all then have a concept art award which looks at the stage before the artists get their hands and everything so all of that idea generation and doing um, concept development so not necessarily making assets for games which is a bit of a different skill but actually the earlier stuff so if you've got a background uh, hand drawing or digital drawing and more of that creative um, visual idea generation then that is probably something you might be interested in then the bottom there we have a cgi and visual effects so that is um not so much games or anything at um high-end visual effects so the sorts of things that we're now starting to see um come onto tv shows like the mandalorian where a lot of their backdrops are digitally generated uh, but also um visual effects for films and various sort of things so it's a a really in interesting kind of area of growth at the moment with a lot of the games technologies that have sat within games for perhaps the last 10 years. Now they're getting the sort of the high end power that film have had put in real time. So actually the CJ and visual effects industry is starting to use, use real time a little bit more. On the right hand side, if you're interested in animation, so if you'd rather bring things to life um, with movement and everything else, then we have Beyonders in animation as well, which has pathway through it in different um, art forms, whether that be 2D, 3D animation or stop motion. Stop motion is something actually that we, we do really well with. And we have a lot of award winning students that, that go on to great things with stop motion. I'm not sure many places do um, academically, but we do. And then our games animation route as well, which focuses animators towards games elements. So if we were still in person, and um, this was a couple of years ago that this obviously couldn't do it this year, but we have um, a lot of students. So this was our, this was our day one, um, I think 2019. So our first day in September when everyone arrived. Um, we are so large as a department of insight. So we use the King's Hall in Stoke, which is what it's uh, quite fancy looking and we fill our students into there instead which is quite fun because we there's you just see a chain of students um between the campus and the king's hall but it's really awesome to um to welcome everybody in a really positive part of the community as one of our students um, we offer everything from a foundation year so a, a level three year for those who maybe don't quite hit the level four bar all the way up to phd through masters and everything else in between and we do we do really hard to keep uh, a big community of different disciplines because artists can't make games on their own and equally neither can programmers. So you know, everybody has to come together and, and make games. And we very much strive towards that with the way that we 
kind of uh, approach thing. Software facilities is something that is always hot on everybody's kind of question, like what do you have? Well, if if the industry uses it, so do we, and that's kind of our our key kind of focus. So we are teach teaching university, we do teach Maya as well in a few other areas. Um, but with new kind of emerging technologies like um, Marvelous Designer, Houdini, uh, ZBrush, well, ZBrush has been with us for quite some time. All these things as part of modules, students have access via floating licenses. And right now with the pandemic in place and not being able to use our facilities, a lot of these pieces of software can actually be licensed um, via our, um, our VPN as well. So students can still access software at home without the need to kind of purchase it themselves. Um, we have 24 hour library access and the two of our labs are actually in the library and the third one is just outside it, which is also 24 hour access. So you can work entirely on site and make use of those spaces. We have a motion capture system, which I don't think I talk about too much in these slides at a quick glance. No, we don't. Um, but we have um, a large motion capture studio that uh, um, we're kind of constantly expanding, but we do do um, full motion capture with motion cap technician sort of role and we've had quite a lot of our graduates go to work at um, various places but a couple to name a few is centroid down in london who do a lot of um, motion capture for games and film and then um, we have quite a lot of the staff at um, cloud imperium uh, of folks that have come through our, our courses as well a few other things that are really quite cool so we've got actually got a couple of rooms now for vr we also have a mixed reality suite where we've got a green screen behind the vr setup so um all of the people playing beat saber in vr um we can mock that up as well which is really cool um we have access to 3d printers and playstation 4 dev kits as well which are very cool so um this is one of the kind of came out of um recent discussion discussion. So out of 150 graduate applications last year, the top three after the code test were all from Stash Uni. Now for a university teaching program, that is awesome. Um, and that confidence that we have is um, very much that, that they can go into these studios and really excel, which is awesome. So that came from, um, from Ubisoft. Now I've got a lot of slides here and I'm mindful that I've already been talking to you for um, well, when do we start? We start at a quarter past. So you're looking for quite a while. So I'm not going to go through all of these in too much detail, but um, I will make these slides available to um, to you to grab. But ultimately, our games design courses, we look at, as you can see here, 2D, 3D design, um, using UD and UE4 for a vast array of different game types. So we don't just teach first person shooters. We look at platformers, we look at racing games, we look at all sorts of different games. We also have um, prototype level design stuff that we do and general kind of gameplay mechanics testing. So it looks pretty, but it functions pretty well as well. So it's not all about kind of making things pretty. This is where we kind of sit with um, a load of different areas, but the ultimate, the ultimate message here is that we make people who make games, and that's ultimately kind of what we want to produce that are capable of, of making games either so low or as teams so everything you see um, in this list here are actually projects for our final year um, end of year showcase that we did um, and all of these are games that have been done by single students so all solo um, there's some other various other things so we have uh, one of the largest global games jam sites that we do every year um, and we have students involved in various other things and we run a, um, a transfuser center as well which is kind of cool which is another opportunity to get involved in a uh, where there's a little bit of funding involved as well. All of our, our students become UK members as part of their sign on, which is also pretty cool. I love it when slides are unnecessarily animated. There we go. So we also have a lot of other areas around things. So a bit about most of these anyway. Um, we can see kind of where the continuum of games kind of sits. Oh, there's some more slides, there's some more animation. I'm just going to make all these things pop up. So just to give you an idea, and again, these are perhaps going to can get your hands on them and digest them a little bit more. What we've tried to do is break down what 
a, a student's experience would be like on each of our courses and what you might kind of study and focus on. Um, you can see um, across the kind of top three, and it'll be the same on game where it might be a little bit later on. Um, group work is a big key component of what we do. So our second and third years work together in a module, a set of modules called collaborative games development and testing. Um, and what we do is we pair up final year students, so third year with level five students, so those in their second year, and they work as seniors and juniors on a project. So the seniors take responsibility and the juniors work and learn um, with them. And what we get out of that is some really awesome games that um, are genuinely fun to play as well as kind of you know, nice hacking together. So it really does work um, very well. So the games programming stuff, this is more of your um, low level kind of work. So taking away a layer of pretties and focusing more on kind of the really cool stuff that functions. Now, I never quite know when I come and do these talks whether I'm talking to folks who are more uh, computing orientated or perhaps more art. So do if you're one of the two, please. I apologise if I'm talking not directly to you at the moment. Um, but we look at things like hacking. Um, we work in both DirectX and OpenGL to make sure that you're kind of comfortable to go onto a multitude of different systems. Um, we also do a fair bit of work with um, PlayStation Academic and C++. So we have availability of PS4 dev kits, which on, um, which is really cool. So we've had students do PSVR projects, etc., um, which is which is pretty ace. So these are the sort of roles that our program is going to. Um, and then further down, that would be lovingly animated. Um, for the various other things. The program is there. We've also got folks in a lot of those other roles. I'm going to skip through some of these because they are very kind of programmer orientated. Um, but one of the another somewhat that we had recently was um, that companies that would normally employ computer scientists have actually begun um, employing our games graduates instead because they actually have a much broader understanding of um program designing the systems of the programming rather than just the computer science side um which is really quite humbling to hear that actually just folks that do focus on games can still there's a load of really broad options um no we don't expect any previous knowledge of any um games programming um, or games development the kind of first week we assume you've never done any programming before it never hurts to have kind of a bit of a play so if you've um if you have kind of the option to maybe look at some scripting languages or anything that might have the idea of passing variables around doing classes and that sort of thing amazing that's awesome but we're not expected so what we're kind of setting you up for is for you to be ready to become games programmers and we don't expect you to arrive as games programmers because that would be for us. So um, this is what we currently have with um, our programming courses. Now, the programming courses actually um, have a much higher rate of students going to um, The reason being that actually as programmers going on placement, it's a little bit easier than an artist. And don't let that make your decision as to which way you go. Um, don't go to programming just because there's a, it's more likely for a placement. But with, and you'll find it with a lot of courses, as artists going in for placement because you get access to all of the things that if you leak it or if you take that knowledge away might kind of destroy the intellectual property or the, the real unique selling point of a, of a game. Whereas with programming placements, they often position folks um, a little bit more, more of a, a safe space where they can do a little bit less damage maybe. So Funny your project to go away for what you're thinking about right now, but just kind of put a load of things together for where you might want to kind of be in four or five years time for each of you. Um, so we've got we've had projects in loads of different sort of things. We've had folks do procedural generation. That's quite popular at the moment. Um, real time mesh generation, um, dealing with uh, latency in multiplayer games. That's a programming project, um, weather systems, water systems. 
So we did have a student develop um, a SNES emulator, which was kind of cool. Uh, we've had, we've actually had AI projects that where we've had self-learning AI um, learn to play different games. So um, Tetris was the one I also saw um, an AI attempting to learn how to play Worms, which was mildly funny, not Worms, sorry, Lemmings. And um, yeah, it's mildly funny because it just, it works on a sort of make a, make a decision and if it fails, try again approach. So there's just lots of death, which is, um, I guess, part of Lemmings. So um, also various other uh, virtual sort of interesting things that we've been doing. From a, the digital art side, um, yeah, it's all, it's all the pretties ultimately, but what we what we aim to make any artist that comes through is not just not just an artist, but a games artist. So somebody who can make really kind of pretty artwork, but works on a real time system and doesn't require to be pre-rendered. So it will run at 60 FPS in most cases. Um, and yes, yeah, so this is um, this piece of work that I, I looked after the student on that one. So um, that was a fully configurable um, Lamborghini that the student developed, which was really quite cool. Um, pretty much what it says there, we start you with the, the, the technical underpinnings, so software, et cetera, um, and then move you through practical skills. Am I short on time, Paul? No, all right, <laughs> awesome. No, no, um, just carry on. I just thought I'd uh, turn the video on and uh, <laughs> fair enough. I, I foolishly haven't got a, a convenient clock and my watch has died. I don't I'll keep looking at it. Um, but all of our modules, it's all about practical outcomes. So on the art side, we won't make you sit an exam. That's we think that's a little bit evil. Um, so all of it is creative project work. It's all um, shows your practical skills. Yes, you'll have to do some writing for it, reflection um, and critical reflection. So we do hold a lot of stock in your ability to analyze your work, compare it to professionals, see where you stand um, in your development cycle. So identifying areas for improvements, tutorials you might need to go and follow, etc. So there's still a heavy academic side, but we don't make you sit exams. Uh, concept art. Is more of the 2D side, so some examples of pieces from that. Uh, these are some examples of our games artist work. Um, the one in the middle bottom, I think, is actually a piece of master's work as well. So um, but, uh, this piece here um, was a piece done by a student last year who now works at Playground Games on, um, I believe, Fable, uh, which is quite cool. And um, I think actually most of the students that did this work are all employed, which is uh, pretty cool. I think a lot of this slide set um, animate and my internet isn't good enough because I live in the middle of nowhere, so I'm not going to go through that. The VR stuff that we do is all about immersive 3D content, immersing the game, uh, the gamer or player in um, a bigger environment. And if you have had chance to um, experience VR, it is it is awesome, but it does present a whole load of different design questions, challenges, um, and so on that normal console screen or like uh, desktop experience doesn't sort of challenge. So animation stuff, which I mentioned um, previously, so you can do game animation within that, but you can also do the 2D, 3D Pixar stuff. They regularly, not at the moment, but they, they regularly make trips to America to go to some of the big animation studios that um, the course leader is quite, um, has some really good relationships with. So quite regularly students go and visit Pixar, which is awesome. Um, this bottom image here is actually our motion capture studio. So um, this used to be um, my domain, but I've moved on a little bit since then. Um, but yeah, it's a really awesome space where we can, <coughs> oh, apologies, where we can record um, human movement or dogs. We've recorded a dog once. That was um, interesting. Um, slightly easier to control than my toddler when I tried to get him to do some motion capture. We can take that human movement and drive characters with it, which is um, really cool. Um, we've had studios come in, and I can't name names, um, and actually use this for their commercial projects. Unfortunately, I can't tell you who. So there's those courses again. I'm going to skip over that. Now, this set of slides do include um, a slideshow. I'm not going to attempt to run over um, Teams because I'm well aware from the last 12 months of teaching via Teams, me running a video over it probably isn't going to work. So um, I will pass details of that on. and I'll see you in a moment if I can grab it as a link. Um, but this is 
this is a handful of our um, locations where our students have gone. Now, these are actually places our students have gone um, shortly after graduating, um, which is awesome. So um, these aren't the case of, you know, they go away and then five years later, after slaving at various smaller studios, they go to these. These are sort of some of our employers that we do a lot of work with and bring in for talks and other stuff. But page kind of speaks for itself, really. Um, but certainly not all of all of them. And that's me. And there's a lovely QR code if um, if you are interested in our open days. Um, they'll be online. So but um, if you wave your phone at the QR code, um, I'll bring that up for you and you can sign up to a virtual open screen. Listen to us talk some more. And uh, yeah, any questions? If anybody has anything they want to fire, please um, rob it in the chat. I'm also not adverse to you coming and talking to me. But uh, yes, if you do want to use microphone, phone, there's no issues with that. Um, we can do that too. Great. Thank you so much, Stuart. Um, and so yes, for the benefit of the rest of the students, we'll have the uh, this recorded and made available as well as the slides. And if you contact me, and I'll happily pass on any contact to, uh, to Stuart afterwards. But uh, that was really great. Thank you so much. Awesome. I'm going to kill my screen share just so I can look at you guys rather than um, so you don't get the side of my head, which is the only problem with my current screen setup and my camera being over there. Um, yeah. If you do have any questions, please fire them into the chat room or if you want to raise your hand and talk to me i'm open to that as well okay we've got a, someone typing just at the moment you can see emma's typing so i'm just going to go and grab a, a link to our show reel whilst um, um, i mentioned emma was typing and then she stopped yeah fair enough so it's always, it's always the way it goes the moment you spy something they stop um, uh, well, then that's like, I mean, that's fantastic. Like I said, if oh, there we go. Um, we do do a bit of Python as well. So um, depending on so when you start, um, obviously C plus plus is heavily used, but we do look at um, a few different programming languages. If, if you want to do C sharp and go down the route of maybe more scripting than programming, then our games design programming course is probably more suited so that you C sharp through Unity. Um, we do do some Python, but I can't tell you how much off the top of my head. Trying to find the right show reel. I think it's this one. Just um, just throwing the show reel URL into the the chat for you, the YouTube version. So um, that was our, our 2019 one. We're still kind of finalising the 2020. Cracking. OK, then. Well, as I said, if there's any questions that crop up later that you think you want to ask, then uh, then by all means, let us know and I'll pass those on. But uh, I think that is well, that's been great and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you ever so much. Awesome. No worries. Um, yeah, if any, if, if, um, if, yeah, if anybody does want to kind of contact me directly, my, my details are in various things. So um, you know, feel free to reach out equally if you've got any questions about courses um, outside of that, then just inquiries at staffs will will be a great place to start. Great stuff. Thank you so much then. Cheers, Paul. And um, yeah, I'll see you later. Indeed. Thanks again. Bye now. Bye.